IPL, the journey over the last 13 years, and the way forward. We have a panel which is really distinguished, and as they say, needs no introduction. But anyway, just a quick word about the four eminent people with us today. Mr. Rajiv Shukla, who's been in the BCCI for 28 years. He has been chairman of the governing council of the IPL for many years. And he's a man known for consensus and teamwork. Sanjo Gupta, CEO star, the broadcaster which brings the IPL to millions of fans across the world. VVS Lakshman, I think there's no point saying anything about him. <laughs> Just a bit of trivia that I think the number 20 has something important to do with him. He played 20 years of first class cricket. He scored almost 20,000 runs in cricket. And in his last first class match, made 120. A true master. Pleasure having you with us, Lakshman. Thanks, Amrit. Thank you. Also, Venki Mysore, uh, CEO of Knight Riders Sport. I think um, one of the most creative brands in the IPL. And uh, not least because of their uh, global expansion and going abroad. So gentlemen, before we start and get into a discussion, just to put things into a bit of context about the, the IPL. Uh, it's been 13 years, and in this 13 years, uh, IPL has grown to become the biggest sports brand in cricket. There's a valuation involved of maybe $7 billion or whatever. But apart from the numbers, I think it is the gold star in terms of cricket leagues across the world. And it's a formula which has been copied in Xerox across the globe, the latest being the 100 in England. It's a domestic tournament, but it has got global implications. The best players come here, best players aspire to come and play in the IPL. It is also India's soft power. It is actually what Indian cricket has contributed to the growth of cricket worldwide. And I think uh, it is our perhaps the strongest contribution since the days of Ranji, who's, who's supposed to have invented the leg lamps. So from the cricket standpoint, it's absolute top quality. Commercially, it's a blockbuster. And I think more important than all these things is the social impact it has. It gives Indians joy. It gives Indian happiness. It's a part of Indian summer. It's a Tihar, it's a festival, which is a bit of Holi, which is Moj, and a bit of Diwali, which is glitter and happiness. So I think that's the context in which we have IPL as uh, something which uh, involves uh, Indians and it, which has given us so much pride. So I'll, ask, I'll start with Rajiv Ji, that uh, it's been a long journey of the IPL. And uh, what would be most satisfying is the way it was pulled off this season in the UAE in extremely tough conditions. And just see how things have gone bad in, say, South Africa and in New Zealand, which shows what a great success and what a great effort the BCCI, IPL teams, the broadcasters, everybody put together. Your comments on the success of this season's IPL? Well, Amrit, at the outset, I'd like to thank Fiki for organizing such webinar on IPL. And uh, I'm happy to notice that uh, they have, uh, you know, opened an entire wing within the Fiki to emphasize on sports activities, which is a good thing. So I'd like to thank them. Then we have got all the stakeholders here. From franchise side, Venki Mysore is here, whose name is well known, and uh, he's really done a lot in terms of you know promoting uh, his company and uh, the entire you know brand as well. VBS Lakshman, we all know that uh, his contribution as cricketer as well as commentator and administrator also. He looks after Hyderabad. This thing also, so there also his role is very pivotal. So he's also here. And Sanjog Gupta, the broadcaster, is the key element as far as IPL is concerned. So Sanjog is representing them, star. So I mean, all three are here. Well, uh, you know, if you solicit their opinion, they would tell, tell you that how the, uh, the edition of uh, IPL 13 went off. I think it's a big success because we did it in adverse circumstances. We organized it. And the 42 of BCCI, that way, I mean, the President Saurav Ganguly, Secretary Jai Sai, and all the office bearers, that they 
put together, we all decided, we sat together and decided that, you know, if we don't resume cricket, BCCI doesn't resume cricket, then what kind of signal are we going to send to the world? England, I think English board was the first one to take that kind of a step and they organized those matches in England in, in I mean, in, during pandemic. So thought we, should, we thought that we must go ahead. It was not only revenue that, we, you know, we were looking for revenue. The whole thing was to, you know, restart the game. And there was a suggestion that we should declare it zero year and we should not have IP this year. And uh, there was also, you know, some suggestions that whether market would be able to take uh, to, to afford two seasons within six months, two IPL seasons. All these, you know, uh, problems were there, but still we decided that we should go ahead. And when we decided it, we, it was not known what kind of situation would arise, whether, you know, players would get sick or something will happen, but everything went up very well. And uh, I'm happy to note which uh, Sanjog will endorse that uh, we achieved a record of 31.57 million viewers which is, uh, you know, very significant as far as IPL is concerned. So in terms of revenue also, because uh, we, we need uh, money for uh, domestic cricket and other things also, infrastructure development. So that purpose has also been served. BCI got the enough money to spend on cricket. And as far as resumption of game is concerned, that also took place. And it was a successful tournament according to me because I've been there twice. And, uh, <clears throat> except that spectators were not at the ground, but that was the compulsion. And we were helpless completely. So franchisees also cooperated very well. They remained in bubble. They maintained all the guidelines. They, you know, adhered by all the guidelines which had been given to them. Broadcasters also promoted it. And, uh, uh, you know, the players, commentators, everybody. So everybody realized the the compulsions and accordingly they supported us and it was a successful tournament. So I'm really delighted, happy with the performance of all the you know stakeholders in IPL. Sanjog, if I can ask you, it must have been a great challenge because I read somewhere that you spoke about what is called inspired thinking to deliver this year's IPL. Inspired in the sense not just of the bubbles but also the coverage, dressing up the stadium, uh, different sounds for different games, fan engagement. So, how much of a challenge was it to actually deliver IPL in these conditions? It, well, it, it was a challenge, uh, Amrit, and a, and a significant challenge at that. I, I think I echo what um, Rajiv ji said. It's a challenge that needed to be taken, um, you, not just not just for resumption of cricket, not just for resumption of sport, but for resumption. In this time. Let's yeah, not you, forget the larger purpose that IPL serves. Sorry. No, Amrit, you, you were saying something. You are right. You mentioned something called IPL was needed for national sentiment. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 what uh, Rajiv ji said. It it started. You know, obviously, it's important for cricket and the world of cricket. It's important for <clears throat> the ecosystem of sport in this country and around the world. But I think more than anything else, and you know, that is the credit that must go to BCCI um, that they decided to act in national interest. Uh, because while IPL at times is seen to be just another cricket tournament, it is much more than just another cricket tournament, especially when it comes in times like these, when the country has gone through a period of suffering and um, isolation, a, a tournament like this comes along and really brings joy to people's lives. And I think it is that purpose or that mission which made the entire endeavor or the entire challenge worth undertaking. You know, obviously, as, as Rajiv ji already said, there are the commercial interests, there are the interests of the stakeholders. But in this case, I think all of us were driven by a much larger purpose than the purely selfish motive that we may have as stakeholders, which was to really turn the national sentiment of this country around, bring joy and bring a sense of togetherness back to the country. Right? We, we were all living isolated lives, socially isolated lives. And this tournament allows us to cheer together. This this um, Activity, as especially as it came just before or during the festive season, also rekindled our hearts, um, joy, fun, and all those positive emotions that perhaps had left us over the last six or seven months as the country went through 
what it ha had to go through because of the pandemic. So I think there is a there was a larger purpose driving us, and everything after that made the effort worth it. Uh, Rajiv ji spoke about um, the lack of crowds in the stadiums in in UAE. I think credit to BCCI and to, um, to 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 broadcast efforts and to the teams. Most viewers didn't feel the difference. Right, the atmosphere of IPL was maintained. In fact, at in at some levels, maybe even improved. And I think that's the inspired thinking that you are referring to, um, Amrit. When we started with this endeavor of having to design the broadcast for IPL. We did not say to ourselves that we must compromise for everything that IPL will not have, but completely reimagine what IPL can be. And there were various elements to it. One part of it was the just the atmosphere. Not, and the atmosphere is not just important for viewers at home, but for players in the stadium as well. It is important for commentators at the stadium as well, because every everything really... The second bit of it is how do we make sure that the experience of viewers at home is as exciting or as full of life as it would have been if they were at stadiums, and which is why the interactive experiences were, were brought in. The fact that you could cheer for your favorite teams or your favorite players from home by you know uh, uh, sending emojis and actually participate in the cheer, or for that matter, see yourself on the broadcast with hundreds and thousands of other people who were watching, were all efforts at making the viewer at home feel extra special and feel like he's he or she is a part of something much bigger than just a viewing experience yeah. and i think that's the inspired thinking that that we 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 indulged in and you know i think right from the time that bcci had its first conversation with us it was very clear to us that this was going to be the biggest endeavor of its kind that we had ever undertaken both from the point of view of what we needed to ensure the safety of more than 700 crew members who worked on the broadcast across UAE and Mumbai, as well as delivering the biggest ever IPL, uh, which Rajiv ji has already spoken of. It is the biggest ever IPL, more than 400 billion minutes of consumption only on TV, uh, which is which uh, a, a number that no IPL season prior to this has ever hit. So it was a challenge, but it was a challenge that was worth taking because of what was at stake, which in this case was national center. Yes, challenge well met and successfully met. So, VVS, if I can bring you in, how did yeah. the players, after being in lockdown for such a long time, to come and compete at that level, you know, in those uh, conditions? Well, I think it was quite challenging for the players, you know, but all of them very, very pleased that at least. They're back doing what they love the most, you know, which is play the game of cricket. And luckily, uh, I, I felt that the, the way we reached UAE, everything was safe. There was a chartered flight from Mumbai. So the well-being of the players was taken care of. The franchise made sure that every uh, franchise, every team is accommodated in a very good place so that the, feel, the players will not feel suffocated because it was going to be very challenging to maintain the healthy mindset of the players, you know, because cricket is a game where there are a lot of ups and downs. So you wanted the players to be as fresh as possibly uh, they can be, uh, not only from the skill point of view, but from the uh, mind point of view, the mental aspect point of view. So the franchise took care of that. And then we had good three weeks of preparation before the first match started. And UAE, we know the ICC Academy had fabulous facilities for all the franchise. The wickets were awesome. Once the tournament started, uh, I thought that uh, there was a lot of talk about whether the intensity of the game, the intensity of some of the players, how they'll perform in the absence of the spectators was questioned. But this, uh, as it turned out, has been the closest IPL. You know, for the last two games, no one knew who were the qualifiers. Uh, and I thought the intensity from all the teams was excellent. Uh, on the field. So I think credit to the BCCI where they take, took care of the well-being the, and the safety of the players. You know, every five days we were uh, uh, tested. You know, there was a GPS system which was involved with the, the medical team, the central medical team knew the whereabouts of each and every player whom they are coming in contact with. So as far as the safety is concerned, every precaution, every guidelines was taken care where the safety and well-being of the players was... Uh, uh, of paramount importance. I think that's an important point to make that despite lack of match time before the IPL, yeah. the intensity was high, the quality of cricket was exceptional. 
So I yep. think that's credit to the players, to the franchise, to the teams, to the support staff to deliver that quality of cricket that IPL is known for. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Venki, it must have been tough from a franchise point of view also to make the shift, you know, create those bubbles, uh, create those conditions for the players to perform. How, what kind of a challenge was it and how did you cope? No, that's a very good point, uh, <clears throat> Amrit. You know, while you know, we should all be very happy with the way the whole tournament played out, uh, but I think it's very important to recognize that a lot of people may not realize this, but behind the scenes, the economics of the league is what even allows us to do these types of things. For example, you know, the creation of the bubble, the biosecure bubble, and sort of transplanting ourselves into another country to play was very expensive. I mean, we talk about charter flights, we talk about having hotels. <clears throat> A lot of people don't realize that the staff that was servicing the team, the team also had to be in the bubble. And so there were costs associated with that. And uh, the costs in UAE compared to, for example, the uh, just to give you an example, the hotel cost is, was easily double that. But the economics of this league and where this brand has gone is what allows us to do that. Now, if, if another league tries to do this, it's not easy. It's not easy. And it'll be interesting to see how they will cope with this. Uh, so it was, it was quite a mammoth exercise and uh, and uh, expensive exercise as well because on the one hand your revenue drops without uh, ticket revenue there <clears throat> food and beverage merchandising revenue etc sponsorship revenue definitely does uh, took a little bit of a hit because of the fact that you know felt they couldn't activate it as well but you know i think the whole ecosystem that has been built around ipl and the brand stands today allow each of the players to be able to do this and uh, hopefully hopefully this is a one off year and we don't have to repeat these types of things going forward venki that's an interesting point because i understand the costs go up the expenses are high you lose revenue from the sources you mentioned but the bottom line is that if you look at the larger picture the ipl has de-risked the teams in terms of you know year by year uh, profit losses so that also is the strength of the IPL, that you are pretty well insured, protected against an economic commercial setback. It, it, it is, and I think, you know, it's, uh, it's full credit to the league and even to the franchises, because at the end of the day, it's uh, the, sum of the, uh, the sum of the parts here makes up the whole and what each of the franchises have done over the years to <clears throat> help build the brand. And have gone through a lot of pain in the initial years yeah. because, as you know, uh, you know until until Sanjog and the Star team stepped in, uh, you know there were challenges in terms of profitability and the costs and whatnot. So it is a. Thank you. I'll interrupt you because that's a uh, you know, larger question which we'll come to later. <clears throat> yes. I want to bring in Shuklaji again and ask a question, and I'll want responses from all four on that. What is it that makes IPL so successful? and the gold standard in terms of cricket leagues across the world. What is it that IPL uh, makes IPL succeed on such a level? Rajivji, first up. Well, I mean, I've been associated, <coughs> associated with IPL from day one, the governing council. We, the first members of IPL governing council were Arun Jaitley, I.S. Bindra and me. When Sarat Pawar was the president of BCCI, when it had been constituted. So I've got an emotional bond with the IPL. So. <coughs> First of all, I would like to clarify one thing. I mean, the Sanjog and you are, you know, saying it's a national sentiment. That's also there. But now I think it has become an international sentiment also. Because during these 13 years, once I was in Karachi for a wedding, and there was no Pakistani player playing in IPL teams. But in our hotel in Karachi, there must be 500 people in the lobby watching IPL. Till, I mean, till 12 o'clock in the night, they were watching IPL. Once I was in England, so in a pub, they were watching IPL. So it has become an international, you know, this thing, emotion also. And people, and that's, that's when we had decided as, I, as IPL chairman had taken a decision to take it to maximum countries, the telecast. Then broadcaster, they had given rights. So I think most probably 180 countries or something we had taken it. 
at that point of time. Australia was the only problem because of the time zone that we were trying to sort out. I think Sanjo could have sorted out now. So that was the only problem. Otherwise, we had taken it to entire globe. So it is an international brand. A. Secondly, most of the boards, you know, the cricket playing nations, they are also getting benefited because we are giving revenue to them also. Their players are also playing for it. So it has become an international brand instead of a national brand. And uh, Indian viewers, they also enjoy because they they get to watch the fantastic cricket. And uh, thirdly, it generates revenue also to players, even domestic players who don't see anything in the process to go up. And suddenly with their performance in IPL, they go at the top and a lot of <coughs> you know, players have been inducted directly into the team India because of their performance or India A yeah, because of IPL. So there are several benefits of IPL. In the beginning when this concept had been you know, conceived, then a lot many franchises, they were not willing to come on board. So we had to go personally to pursue them that this kind of league is going to begin. You should, you know, pick up the stake in it or you should buy the teams and all <coughs> that. But now there is a race to now two teams are being opened most probably because AGM will take a decision. But there is a proposal to induct two more teams. And uh, I think a uh, lot many people are keen to pick up those teams. So mm -hmm. now people have taken a started interest. Another point which Vinky pointed out about the revenue that I can understand because then when you take outside, you know, and this time there's no spectators, uh, you know, the get revenue, you don't get and other things also. But at the same time, the whole purpose was to organize it and minimum revenue at least you will get. You know, over the years, Amrit, in when we complete 10 years, then this revenue model comes into existence and this model has ensured the profitability to each and every franchise. Now each and every franchise is making profit. Initial years, yes, they bleed it for several years. I can understand that. Like barring one team like Venki's team, I think that must be making a little bit of profit because of Shah Rukh Khan, because he had personal brand value and because the lot many sponsors went there. Otherwise, lot many franchises, they were really bleeding. But Towards the 10th year, and after this revenue model, every franchise is making money, making profit. So, this time may be a little less, but next year, when it will happen here, they will be making more. And it's linked to the performance of the team also. So, I think in total, we were able to accomplish the task, and it's a win win for everybody. Yes, sir, you BCCI teams for de risk and profitability. That's great. You also protected the IPL by ensuring that the Indian players don't go and play anywhere else in these similar leagues. So that also makes IPL more exclusive, special, and different from other leagues. So, what I want to know from um, Sanjog now is that the cricket is absolute top quality with the best players playing. What is it? in the IPL that makes it so attractive to commercial partners, to sponsors, you know, and others to come on board? So there are, there are three big vectors. Um, one is, of course, the scale of IPL, right? The fact that you get 50 days of high quality cricket in a concentrated burst of two months is the kind of advertising platform that most brands you know, crave for, right? So <clears throat> since IPLs, one of the things that we've seen is a lot of brands have now started planning their entire campaigns around IPL because no other cricket, maybe with the exception of the World Cup, which comes once in four years, gives you that kind of a concentrated burst of cricket, high quality, top quality, world's best cricket for two months. So I think the first um, vector here is the scale that IPL delivers. No other property in this country will get you past 400 million viewers. It's only an IPL and perhaps a World Cup that will give you that kind of scale. And even in the World Cup, you and I both know that there is a huge distinction between India games and non-India games, right? So there will be up to seven to nine to 10 India games, which will obviously deliver massive reach. But other than that, all other games will have lower viewership. But IPL does, IPL has India playing every night. So that thing is the first vector. The second vector, which we've been huge proponents of over the last three years, is how deep IPL has gone. 
right? So IPL for the longest time was considered to be an urban phenomenon, right? Cricket. What we've tried to do with the regionalization efforts that we put behind IPL after acquiring it, whether it's in TN, whether it's in AP Telangana, whether it's in Kerala, whether it's in parts of Maharashtra, Karnataka, West Bengal, with our language feeds, we've tried to expand the audience for IPL. And we've seen significant growth. Just to give you a sense, the southern states, viewership in the southern states from 2017, after which we acquired IPL, to 2020, has grown close to 60% in the four southern states. And that's primarily because we've tried to take this, the, the tournament much deeper than cricket originally was. So I think the second thing is how deep IPL goes and how deep it's connected. No, women, women the, viewership, women viewership. Women viewership. Yes, so I was just coming to that, uh, Rajiv Ji, I was just coming to that. The third vector is how wide the viewership of IPL tends to be, both in terms of women and in terms of kids. This season, IPL 2020 saw a growth of almost 25% in terms of viewership for women and kids. And when I say kids, it's basically 4 to 14 year olds yeah. and women. So no other property delivers this kind of scale, width and depth. And I think that's what makes IPL as attractive a prop proposition as it has become for all commercial stakeholders. Okay, if I can bring uh, Venki in here. Venki, uh, the IPL the brand has grown over the last so many seasons, but the IPL hasn't really changed much. It started with a certain you know, structure, it's remained like that. What, has, uh, what or have you done in order to grow the KKR brand? What efforts have, are required for a team within the IPL to grow as a brand? And uh, you know, you I think done well in the sense that you've gone global, you've been uh, CPL, you are in America now. You even uh, there was an effort to get into the South African league. Uh, I think you are one of the first teams to shift away from players to the team and the brand. So just take us through your journey at KKR of growing the brand. Yeah, Amrit, I think, you know, one of the things that uh, uh, we've worked very hard to do is like, like in any business, you basically say, you have to understand who your customers are. You've got a great product and you have to understand who your customers are. And your customers are the, <clears throat> you know, ticket buying public who come to the ground and then who switch on the TV, stay, watch, whatnot. I, you know, we uh, the realization set in very early that you can't take any of these things for granted because you're competing for people's wallet as you're competing for their attention. And so the two pillars on which we have attempted to build our franchise has been on one is on the brand and the second is on the fan base. You know? mm -hmm. Think of the fan base, see what Sanjog was just saying in terms of how deeply uh, it has been penetrated in a Indian uh, marketplace. But you realize that this is a product like Shuklaji said that this has become an international, uh, th there is interest at the international level. But you have to engage them at various, uh, in various ways. So, and keep the brand alive because one of the challenges you have in an IPL is you, it's a very high intensity tournament, highly visible for a period of two months. Then how do you keep the brand alive for the rest of the year? So what we have attempted to do clearly is to take the brand to different countries, different markets where, they, where we believe that we can actually move build a viable business where the brand can become more salient and the fan base can be built as well. So that is what has led to a, to a, a CPL and a, a Caribbean League and established Trinbago Night Riders. We've been there six years and we also know now the level of Indian interest in a Caribbean League. And without Indian players there, the only connect to Caribbean League is Night Riders. So we have been able to socialize the idea. Similarly, that was a when we went into South Africa and now, of course, the United States, there are other conversations going on in certain other areas. So in an ideal world, if you set up a structure where you can be active 365 days a year through the brand as well as your fan base, then that sort of helps you to make the business robust. I think you know, one great example is that with you, you have Ali Khan from America playing in the CPL. And uh, also in the IPL, though I think he pulled out because of injury at the last minute. Also, I think it gives you some kind of a synergy. You have a common coach in the CPL and in the IPL. 
and uh, I'm sure other support staff that that also I think contributes to being alive and active through the year, as you said. Absolutely, absolutely. It's also a business model that we have tried to replicate, uh, Amrit, where the home base we have tried to first strengthen that and make sure that this model works. Then you can have the confidence to take it, take it in different places. Uh, because it is a challenge to manage from a distance, but uh, you're right. I think that is that's what has helped us a lot using the mother. Yeah. I, I have some questions for uh, VVS. VVS one, how do the players perceive IPL in terms of uh, the thing to succeed in? I think there is a sentiment that players now prioritize IPL over every other form of cricket, especially Ranji Trophy, etc. Secondly, when you are choosing players for the Sunrisers, are you looking as a, looking towards certain kind of cricketers who would fit into a brand or culture of Sunrisers? I remember you mentioning somewhere that we choose players who would gel with us. So what is this gelling? What is this brand? What are these qualities as a team you are looking for in a player? Yeah, I think every franchise tries to develop a character and a culture. Uh, of the franchise. So we got it. That, and that's the brand then. That is the brand. Yeah. So there's a certain culture which we feel is very important for us to go on to win the uh, championship because IPL, while you have players from different cultures, different countries, even from India, different parts of the country, but we just have a one week preparatory camp before the IPL kicks off because everyone are busy with either their international assignments or the domestic uh, assignments. So we want uh, a team or we want a squad where the players gel very easily. And while there may be a lot of superstars who are, uh, are established international players, we want that international players to gel with the uncapped Indian players because ultimately 70% of your squad consists of the Indian players. So we want the Indian players to easily communicate uh, uh, with, with the international stars. So that's the reason why we try to create a platform, uh, especially before the auction, in choosing the players. I'm talking about the international players who can easily come, who are accessible. Because don't get me wrong, there are some international stars, you know, who are inaccessible. You know, they, tr they have a lot of ego. We don't want those kind of players, even though they can win a lot more matches. So we, we try to identify the players who easily come and gel into our culture in, and make the dressing room atmosphere very amicable, uh, which is what we try to do. The second thing, to answer your first question, as far as the players is concerned, uh, I think IPL is the biggest boom for the uncapped players. You know, we've got so many stories over the last 13 years where uncapped players, especially from different parts of the country, not necessarily the uh, the urban cities have realized their dream you know as recently as natrajan you know natrajan has become a household name over the last 3 weeks just because of the ipl at the start of this ipl he was not even in the starting level but the way he, he performed for us and now is representing the the country against a mighty australians in their own backyard and he made a name for themselves so all the players especially the uncapped players know the value of ipl and they know that the kind of recognition they get, not only from the monetary recognition, sometimes they give too much of importance to what is the fees they get, what is the professional fees they get compared to domestic cricket, which is something which you can debate on a different platform. But I think the kind of recognition they get to realize the dream of representing the country, I think there's no better platform than IPL. And this is the same even for international players, you know, because they... While I don't agree with them missing their national duties to come and participate in IPL or compromise on their uh, duty to the country, but a lot of international players also feel that IPL is probably the most recognized cricketing tournament uh, in the world. You know, and if they are part of the IPL, automatically the career will be on the upside uh, move than probably if they're not part of the IPL. So I think a lot of international players also want to be part of IPL. That's the value of IPL, not only for the franchise, but also for the cricketers, because their lives, their careers are built by participating in this tournament. I, I think I just want to come in on one small thing, Amrit, the point that VVS made. Let's not undermine also the impact that seeing some of these uncapped players do well has on the entire cricket ecosystem down the line, right? So there is a 
there is a trickle down effect of what VVS is talking about. You know, yeah. when you see an uncapped player uh, do well uh, in in the IPL, and you know, typically from a small town, those kids who want to take up cricket as a career or have taken up cricket as a career is immense. It's almost a source of inspiration to those who are playing cricket as a hobby to actually pursue it as a as as a career, and to those who are in the early stages of their careers to continue or persist with the sport and, and their, their, their passion for the sport, even if they don't make the list of those 20, 25 cricketers who will play for India. Because for the longest time, either you had an India career or you didn't have a cricket career, right? Oh, yeah. Domestic career was, was oh. considered to be a platform to have an India cricket career and you didn't have much else to go to. And here comes IPL, which is now giving you a chance to actually have a cricket career without even making it to you know the, the 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 top echelons of the cricket ecosystem which which is playing for team india no, no, absolutely. so i think it has a massive inspirational impact as well totally agree uh, i again uh, vvs and maybe venki is there a, a focus on playing a particular brand of cricket for the for the team that vs kkr or vs sunrisers are going to play in a certain way is that also something that goes through your mind? Uh, well, uh, as for that, you, yeah, that, that all depends on the kind of players we get during the auction. You know, the brand or the approach depends on, uh, you know, the strengths of your squad. You know, based on the strengths of your squad, uh, you, you, you prepare for uh, the tournament and you prepare the style with which you're going to play. And again, you know, it can change from... Uh, uh, one season to other season, you know, because uh, like uh, in, in the past, we have been focusing a lot on giving a lot of priority to bowling because we feel that if you have good uh, quality bowlers, that will help you to win the tournament. Uh, and so sometimes, you know, you focus on getting the best bowlers uh, in your squad and then your style and your approach towards the tournament changes. So it basically depends on the squad you have and the, uh, and the strengths of your players. Venki? Yeah. yeah, no, I would agree with that. I think uh, only other point I would make is also the the condition after games being played in home conditions. Uh, so if you see, maybe we have gone through two phases in uh, Calcutta and Eden Gardens. I mean, <laughs> the initial stages, uh, uh, VVS is smiling. And so <clears throat> used to have different types of wickets and you pick those types of skills and players that you wanted. And then suddenly, you know, which was all, you know, slow and low wickets, spinners dominated and people who were able to change uh, the, have the variations in their types of bowling. But then it has become like Australia now. So we have to now play Australian brand of cricket. So, so its conditions play a big role. And uh, I think the think tank is there. VVS is uh, one great example. But in every team, you have the brain trust who are able to assess this and then determine what type of skills are needed to succeed in those types of conditions uh, because every team i suppose to do as well as possible at home and then you know add on the the, the road skills so yeah so that so that kind of changes your brand a little bit so we became a very aggressive batting team in the last few years compared to probably the earlier <coughs> phase so i suppose you have to the reason i asked was when the ipl started 2008 i was at delhi and the thinking at that time was that we are daredevil, we are going to play fearless cricket, we are going to play aggressive cricket. So this, in a way, became the team culture and we started looking for those kind of players. So maybe that's the way of creating your own brand of a particular style of cricket. So maybe that could be one of the factors in building brands which are distinct from each other. But coming back to um, some other questions, Rajivji, first you. IPL uh, what do you think is the way forward in terms of strengthening the brand or changing the brand or enhancing it? Kya karna chahiye or is there no need? Everything is working fine. Let it just roll. Well, value additions and enhancement year to year is very essential. And that we have been doing also in terms of broadcast quality, adding more elements in terms of technology that has been also been done, keeping viewers in mind. We create 
try to create, uh, as far as telecast is concerned, lot many things. So that's one aspect. Another aspect is that initially we had thought of uh, that we'll be playing with eight teams that in between two more teams were brought and finally something happened. They went back. Now again, we are thinking of adding more teams to so season gets enlarged. And uh, broadcasters, they have also given us a Levi to, to, to play a certain number of matches. Within that, uh, you know, that framework, you know, it can be, you know, expanded. The duration of the tournament can be expanded. And I think there is plenty of viewership for extended uh, tournament also. And, uh, and apart from that, the whole idea is to take it internationally in terms of, you know, viewership and involvement of the international viewers also. So earlier we had thought of these organizing these fan parks in India. So that we have been already doing this year. We couldn't do because the tournament was being played outside. But in future, we are thinking of organizing fan parks abroad also, internationally also. So that can also be done. So a lot of many ideas every year, they keep on flowing. And accordingly, we will act upon that. The BCA will act upon that. And I would like to, you know, for this year's, I mean, it was a very difficult decision. And half of the people were not in favor of having it this year, in UE or anywhere. But I think the bold decision had been taken by Saurav, Jashai, Arun and uh, Vijay Patel, they are, and they consulted us. And we said we should go ahead. And we went ahead and with the support of franchises, with the support of broadcaster, with the support of players, with the support of government of India, that's very essential. Because had they not given any clearance, the Home Ministry and the External Affairs Ministry, it was not possible that we take your team outside those clear clearances as mandatory. And then government of you know, we, they were also very, you know, cooperating. And the Emirates Cricket Board, all these stakeholders, they were on the same base. They supported us and accordingly, this tournament had been organized. So I think uh, now if we have organized this tournament in adverse circumstances, then we have got a confidence, BCA has got a confidence to take it forward in terms of adding making more value additions in future. Sanjo, what would you uh, uh, want to do or the BCCI to do to enhance the brand? I think there are three vectors broadly. Uh, one is the product vector, right? So if one thinks of the product itself, as Rajiv Ji has said, um, an expansion of IPL with new teams coming in at the right time, uh, because we certainly don't want to be in a situation, as Rajiv Ji pointed out, where Teams get added and teams get subtracted, and we all know what did, what that did to viewership. So, so this year, uh, the right time, then. So, so I think the timing depends on how you really map the future for those teams as well, and the runway that you give them to build as a brand. Uh, I think it's important for teams to be competitive, the league to be competitive, continue being competitive as competitive as as it had been uh, last time, and for there to be enough of a runway for those teams to establish themselves and for the league to grow. Because at the end of the day, let's not forget the, the purpose of any product expansion or product growth should be to grow the league as a whole and grow the brand as a whole. Uh, instead of, you know, have taking one step forward, two steps back. Yeah. I think the second vector is the brand, which is what does the IPL brand stand for and what can be extensions of this brand? The IPL women's team is a great example of how the IPL brand from being restricted to a men's tournament can be expanded to cover a different dimension of cricket and expand the IPL brand both qualitative, qualitatively and quantitatively. So I think there is a brand vector to it. The third vector is an audience vector, right? The audience vector has to do with, as Rajiv ji mentioned, how do we take the IPL to new audiences, both in India, which perhaps we are now beginning to reach some sort of a saturation point, but globally as well. You know, is there merit in the IPL product traveling at some point? Uh, is there merit in exploring with the IPL teams? And, and Venki is, is probably best positioned to answer this question. How does how do the teams travel with IPL to create fan following in other parts of the world? Just to just to add uh, some color to this, this year we saw IPL ratings in the UK actually compete with Premier League ratings, which is phenomenal. No. IPL is an important product. It's not an it's not UK's own product. And here's Premier League, which is entrenched in 
the habits and consumer behavior of, of, of the larger population of the TV viewing audience and here IPL is competing for, for attention, which just goes to show what the power of IPL can be if it is unlocked. And there are various ways of unlocking it. Fan parks is one. A wider, you know, uh, Rajiv ji had spoken to us in 2018 about opening Australia. IPL to Australian audiences. You know, there are various ways of going about this, but I think some, you know, there has to be a strategic take on all three vectors to really see how IPL can go from being what it is today, but maybe five times of what it is today, 10 years down the line across brand, product, and audience. A related question, Ranjo. Uh, you articulated very well in terms of quality, quantity, etc., and how to grow the brand. Now, as a broadcaster, you're a key stakeholder in how or what steps need to be taken. So what kind of synergy is between, say, the broadcaster and the IPL BCCI in order to decide this roadmap? Do you work together? Is there consultation? Is there discussion? Is there uh, cooperation in uh, uh, topics of this kind? I, I think it has been fantastic working over the last uh, three years with the BCCI on various facets of, of the IPL. You know, starting with the regionalization strategy, um, we work very closely with the franchises as well. MK's franchise uh, has been a partner to, to Star for, if I'm not wrong, five years, even before we acquired the IPL rights. We've extended that partnership to, to CPL as well. Uh, and we believe that the broadcaster can play an integral role in growing both the brand and the appeal of the brand um, in India and around the world, uh, not just for IPL, the, the, the tournament or, or the brand, but also for brands that are subsumed within the IPL brand, such as Kolkata Knight Riders in this case. Um, and, and I think the more collaborative the approach will be, uh, the more value there is to be unlocked. And we've seen this happen globally, uh, especially um, you know, in, in the US and how closely broadcasters work with leagues to really new areas of opportunities be it the, the all-stars, the new formats, et cetera. Uh, and I think a, con a continuous dialogue with both stakeholders, which is BCCI in this case, the, 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 the licensor of, of the IPL brand, and the teams who are constituents of the larger brand will only unlock more value as we go along. So we, we have really enjoyed working closely both with BCCI and with teams like uh, Kolkata Knight Riders or Mumbai Indians or Chennai Super Kings for that matter. I think it's been a fantastic partnership between BCC, IPL, and STAR, and that's why the IPL has reached where it is today. Now, Venki, if I can bring you in on this, uh, you've grown as a brand, you've taken um, you know, uh, very sort of important steps to grow your brand, the ones you sort of outlined and mentioned. Now, going forward, what kind of support would you sort of need or ask for from BCCI for the teams to grow as brands and also the IPL to grow. Is there something which is missing in this entire uh, piece which needs to be put in, in terms of further growth of the teams and the major mother brand? I, I wouldn't say there's anything missing, uh, Amrit. I think the conversations and dialogue is always uh, between uh, the administrators sizes. <clears throat> I would sort of zero in on perhaps three points just to dovetail on what uh, Sanjog mentioned. See, first and foremost, I don't think we should underestimate the uh, take for granted the, the power of viewership, the power of uh, the brand today, because, you know, we should not lose sight of the fact that cricket is, uh, has been challenged. I mean, if you look at the form, I mean, some of the biggest, I mean, it, it, it pains me when I see a Ranji Trophy final with no crowds. You know, so we should not lose sight of the fact. I think what IPL has done very successfully is bring crowds back to the stadium. And I tell people that the satisfying thing for me when I drive up from our team hotel to a game day is to see crowds and lines of crowds in Eden Gardens in Calcutta. So it just tells you the power of the brand. We shouldn't take that for granted, number one. So we have to become a lot more proactive in how do we engage, uh, delight them. Uh, box office, come by, come inside and watch an IPL game. That's point number one. And the second is some steps have been taken, but you know people have talked about how do you globalize IPL? And Shuklaji talked about fan parks. 
you know, there was a proposal that had go and exhibition against different uh, countries and different markets. Uh, although it is still there, for because of the lack of the window and availability of players, we have not been able to do that. I think we should consciously try that and allow for teams who have you know post season be able to go go to different markets, whichever market it is. Because I think the fact that we played in UAE, suddenly there's a greater attachment from the people there to a tournament like this because there's nothing like touching, feeling it and, and experiencing it. <clears throat> I think the third point I would also make within reason, I know it's slightly controversial, is that see, I think we have to allow a set of Indian players to go out and play. I'll tell you why I say that not so much because of uh, other leagues. But just to the Natarajan example that uh, uh, Lakshman made, which is fantastic. I mean, he was sitting on the bench and he was given an opportunity, credit to Sunrisers. And we have had such examples as well. I mean, take a Varun, who has come in and, you know, literally got selected on the uh, strength of his performance. I think there are at least, every team has at least two, three players who are today sitting on the bench. Domestic, uncapped boys who are not... So, what better than to expose them to certain competitive type of environments and you might unearth a couple more golden nuggets there for the benefit of Indian cricket. And it can be done within a reason rather than nobody is asking for floodgates to be opened. But I think we should think of it that way. So some of these things will help a lot in, in sort of socializing the product a lot more globally, which will make the product even bigger. So that's uh, those are the three things I just wanted to record. Okay, uh, VVS, from a player's perspective, would you want any changes in the IPL? Maybe like what Australia is doing in the Big Bash or the 100 is proposing in England. Anything in terms of uh, the play actually? Uh, well, I, I don't think so. You know, because uh, uh, when I read the, uh, you know, the press about BBL, I think it's because uh, the crowd is not coming or it's not a sought after product. You know, unfortunately, IPL is not like that. In fact, IPL is a very, very sought after product by everyone, you know, whether it's the viewers, whether it's the players. So I, I believe the quality of wickets is something which is very, very critical. You know, this year there was a very good contest between the bat and ball. If you see the wickets in Abu Dhabi, uh, except for the uh, initial phase in Sharjah where it was a high scoring venue. Otherwise, the quality of wickets has been remarkable. So from the player's point of view, just to keep the tournament interesting, you want a good contest between the bat and the ball. Uh, and, you know, that, that's again, you know, the spectators, whether on the ground or watching on television, will really enjoy that contest. The second thing is the use of technology. You know, we've, we've taken a step forward, you know, especially giving more power to the third umpire from the no ball point of view. I think a lot more should be given, uh, a lot more responsibility should be given to the third umpire and a lot more technology, especially if it's available, uh, should be used. You know, so if that's the point, because... The margin of error or the margins are very, very small, you know, so you don't want if something is available, if you're not using that and because of that, the the, the match uh, result can be altered, then I think that's something which the players would definitely need. So good quality wickets uh, and uh, use of more technology, not necessarily tinkering with uh, the format. I don't really agree with 100 ball uh, tournament, neither do I agree with the changes with the big bash. Uh, yeah. I've made. I don't think that will, that was necessary. It will never be necessary, especially in IPL. Australia has done this, split the power play into two and four overs. See, all, all those things can evolve if it's not working. You know, at the moment, I think the interest level is good. You don't want to overcomplicate the game. Uh, I think it's good. You know, when, only when you realize that, you know, okay, something needs to be done. I think that's a time when we can all sit down and work out what is good for the game. But until then, I don't think that we require to complicate the game, which is as it is, such a beautiful format. Uh, we are down to the last two questions. First, I'll address to Rajiv Ji. You know, the IPL has been successful. It's growing. There are plans to make it bigger and better. Are there any risks involved of what you need to guard against in terms of the brand, in terms of the tournament and the league? Well, you know, I mean, I think uh, the Venki has already pointed out those areas. The first thing, first suggestion of him, that uh, we should not get defocused from the spectators. Mm. We have to, you know, have spectators. They are the biggest stakeholders. 
you know, as you mentioned, Ranji, Ranji matches, international players are playing history, people are not coming to watch it. So that kind of, you know, effort should, endeavor should always go on in order to attract not only the television viewership, but the people at the ground also, that they should come to stadiums and watch it. That, that kind of thing is very essential. So involvement of spectators is very essential. So we should not lose it. That safeguard has to be there. Secondly, the quality of game. That's also very key. Now, we should not compromise as far as the quality of the game is concerned. And that's how, that's why I'm, I'm willing to subscribe the suggestion given by Vivius Lakshman that sometimes there are certain questions are being raised about the umpiring system and the quality of umpiring. So there, if we use more technology like no ball, often, you know, there are complaints by certain franchises, they lose the match. So that aspect, so we should strengthen the technology also in order to bring more transparency into the game. So that's also essential. So all these safeguards, thirdly, in terms of revenue also, we have, because we have to keep in mind the, the interest of all the stakeholders. It should be beneficial to all the stakeholders. So in terms of revenue also, we have to be very, very, you know, watchful that we get the sufficient revenue also, the broadcaster also get benefited. So are the franchisee and BCCI as well, and the players. So all the aspects, all the stakeholders should be winning the situation for everybody. These three safeguards are very essential. One point which Venki mentioned, and I don't, uh, you know, at this point of time, I, I mean, I tend to subscribe, is about allowing Indian players, current Indian players, to play for other leagues. It will be like diluting your own brand. And, and there are a lot many people, every day we get hundreds of proposals, you have league here, you have league there. After the success of IPL, everybody is trying, including the, the different boards also. So if you allow one board to take our players, then how can you deny to other boards? Then every country will be, I assume ICC members will be having a league. And how can we provide so many players and how is this won't be possible? Our players can't go and play every day, 365 days. So that's not possible. So A, it will be diluting the brand. B, it would be very difficult, cumbersome job for our players to play throughout the year. So all the And then we have got our domestic cricket also. We have got our international commitments also, national duty, which you call. Yeah. So all these things have to be taken. Then only the calendar is prepared. One thing, the second point which Venki mentioned, and that had been going around in my mind for several years, and I, IPL chairman also had floated this idea, that this champion league slot is already vacant. Nobody has come on that slot. So there, are, there should be, this is my personal suggestion, that there we should utilize this slot there, and we should replace it with a better tournament, maybe some overseas, Tournament. So by which you get to attract the overseas viewership also, overseas involvement also, we can have that tournament overseas somewhere. And with these IPL teams or different format can be worked out, something like that. But that slot must be utilized and we must have. Because if you play only for two months and then you don't do rest of the years, then what the franchisees will be doing. So there has to be something, at least one tournament there should be, by which they are again they are re-engaged during that year. So that should be done. So that these two suggestions are good, but third suggestion, you know, I'm reluctant. Uh, one last question, which I would address to Sanjog and also to Venki. This year's IPL saw a new development in terms of the title sponsor. Now, for the first time, you don't have a cola company. You don't have a mobile manufacturer who's come on board. Now, this is somebody from within the cricket ecosystem stepping up commercially and sponsoring the IPL. It also shows the power of the fan because the entire fantasy sports industry is enabling deeper engagement of the fan with the sport. So how do you see this development, A, commercially, B, just in the way a fan is getting closer, he's a major stakeholder in the sport, and he's coming closer to the IPL. Your views on it. Sanjog first. Thank you then. So Amrit, uh, it's it, it's an interesting observation. Um, this was a this was also a record breaking year for um, IPL 
from the point of view of advertising, right? Um, we had more than a, I, I think close to 118 advertisers on IPL um, and uh, as many as uh, 14 sponsors uh, or, you know, more than 110 advertisers and I think 15 odd sponsors, which just goes to show that the breadth of brands as well as industry sectors interested in getting their brands out there is only growing. And typically there is there is a trend, right? Um, every few years, there's always a new sector that comes up, which is a heavy spender on IPL because the sector is booming and the, 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 the number of brands that want to get their message out there is increasing. Uh, we've seen that with, as you rightly said, with fantasy sports. The other uh, space that has really exploded this year is the ed tech space, right? The education technology space with, with the likes of Baiju's, Upgrad uh, coming in. So I think... It, it again flows back to IPL being the brand that it is and the brand vehicle that it can, be, which just attracts brands of all kinds. And based on, I guess, a certain trend in the economy um, and, and sectors that are booming, we'll every few years, a new sector or a new uh, category of companies coming in, wanting to get their brand messages out there. Uh, we saw cred coming in in a in a big way, and they were a first time advertiser on uh, on, on an IPL. So you know the we will we will continue to see new brands coming in because frankly, for a new brand wanting to get their message out to hundreds of millions of people, there can't be a better platform than IPL. So I think that's testament to the power of IPL and to some extent what's happening in the industry more than anything else. Also, Sanjog, it's not just a category. I think it also shows that fantasy sport and the fan is an integral ally of the IPL. You know, he's getting more closely engaged with the event. And uh, as fantasy sports grows, the fan, whether it's in cricket, tomorrow, football, any other sport, gets more deeply engaged. So I think it's not just a industry or a sector trying to get a message across and getting onto the IPL. I think this is a much more important, significant development of a closer relationship of the fan with the sport. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, again, it, it, it remains to be seen who the title sponsor will be next year. So I don't want to preempt that conversation. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, audience engagement, and I think Venki's already spoken of it a couple of times now, building deeper relationships with fans comes in various different ways. And it's not just uh, for every fan. Fantasy is definitely a, a, a component of it. But I think, you know, even some of the stuff that franchises do uh, to build deeper connect with their fans, uh, at least, you know, Venki's franchise has spent a lot of time, effort and money on building deeper relationships with, you know, fans, not just in, in West Bengal or in India, but around the world. Um, I think fan engagement is, is, should effectively be a 365 days a year job. It's not uh, you know, IPLs active for two months, so let's activate 15 days before and 15 days after, and it's a three-month exercise. It is quite literally a, a, a daily exercise to engage the fan in different ways, and I think fantasy as as part of that overall mix is has definitely brought the fan closer to the game. Um, but there are you know there are other um, avenues as well. So for example. Uh, on, on, on digital platforms, the interactivity that platforms offers uh, offer uh, is another avenue for fans to engage with the game deeper. We have on, on Disney Plus Hotstar, we have a social feed which allows fans to interact with each other uh, as they watch the game. Um, during, during the playoffs, we introduced a watch along feature which allowed you to invite four of your friends to come and watch together. That again builds a deeper connect with fans. So I think Fan engagement needs to be constantly thought about and rethought in and, and technology leverage to see how we can get fans closer to the game, which and, and fantasy is definitely one element in it. A quick word, uh, Venki, because I think we've yeah. pushed time by a long way. So a quick yeah. response on fans yeah, getting closer yeah. to the brand. And we've covered most of it. <clears throat> so just a couple of quick points. You know, one is uh, since I my the other hat I wear is the entertainment hat, I can tell you that live entertainment is is becoming bigger and bigger. And so we are in the right space when you look at IPL, the quality of the product and its live entertainment. I think that will attract a lot of 
extension by brand. So it's great news in terms of fantasy sports coming in. The only other point I would make is a watch out. And the watch out is that there is an industry that which is in the area of fantasy sports, in the area of gaming, in the area of esports, which is growing rapidly right in front of our eyes. And they are actually going to be competing for the same space that we are in, which is attention. And, you know, if you if you look at children, you know, our children today, you know, and, you know, growing up, you know, the obsession that I used to have in my friends about cricket, today, they're not as obsessed about cricket. I mean, they've got multiple different things that attract them. And so do our players, you know, to unwind, they're, they're playing FIFA, they're playing video games and whatnot. So we have to be careful, back to the same point, that we have to be on our toes yeah. with this product and where we are today and how great it has become. But we have to keep growing it and keep not take our eyes off the ball. So I'll I'll conclude with that. So thank you very much. I think we've overshot time, and I think people at Picky are getting a bit edgy. But <laughs> uh, thank you very much for the discussion, which was enriching, enlightening, and it was a pleasure listening to uh, your experiences and your suggestions. So thank you very much once again. All the best, Rajivji. Thank you, Sanjog. Thank you, Amrit. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Pleasure to have all of you on the discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.